it's Lisa from Curtis and Ink Designs in Ontario, Canada. And today I'm going to be doing February's Paper Pumpkin, which is the Sunshine and Smiles, February 2023. And um, it just came yesterday and I haven't had a chance to even open it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And um, fun, this actually coordinates with some of the products that are in the uh, January to June um, mini catalog. And so uh, the products are the Playing in the Rain. It's very shiny in my room here. Playing in the Rain uh, bundle, which comes with the Playing in the Rain dies. And also there is a raindrop embossing folder and it also coordinates with the layering diorama dies so you know once you use up all the supplies in your kit you can go ahead and use all these other products and make more cards uh, using the stamps that you have and then the the coordinating stamps that are in in this kit or in this uh, stamp set so let's go ahead and open it let me go down to my desk here And here's my paper pumpkin. I'm so excited. Let me just put on a light here. I have a light behind me and I have a huge window right in front of me and I have a lot of shadow. Ooh, that's not better. Try this light over here. Let's see if that helps. Yeah, it does a little bit. Try that one. Once I get the plastic off the box, we can go ahead and tur uh, turn on the ring light because then it won't reflect, I think. So let's go ahead and open this. of truth okay so our ink spot is mango melody and I'm actually going to use my big mango melody because I keep these little ones for either gifts or for traveling so I'm gonna pop that in my little box of ink spots and the stamps are adorable Let's see if I can find something to put the stamps behind I don't know, does that help? That's better. So we've got You Brighten My Day, Friends in Any Kind of Weather, uh, Wishing You Sunshine and Smiles, Hello, Some Little Flowers, A Kite, and A Sunshine. So, fun. Okay. And also, so next month, uh, is Paper Pumpkin's 10th anniversary and the uh, 10 years of growth Paper Pumpkin kit is also including a free extra set of stamps as a gift so I'm excited about that and um, you have until the 10th of March if you want to uh, re subscribe to a Paper Pumpkin and if you have yours on Suspension, you may want to unsuspend it for that month. And that's the thing about Paper Pumpkin. It is a monthly subscription. You can buy them individually or in a three-month, six-month, or 12-month subscription. Or you can just have it um, constantly repeating, which is what I do. And um, if you register before February 28th for February's or for March's Paper Pumpkin, if you purchase a multi-month plan, uh, that purchase can go towards your um, celebration. It's still celebration for a couple of days. And you can choose free gifts. Um, let's see if I have my flyer handy here. And there's another flyer too. Uh, you can find it on my website, crittersandink.com. But in celebration, there are free products that you can choose with a $60 purchase or with a $120 purchase. And also during celebration, if you 
would like one of these little blue uh, stamp and cut and emboss machines, you can add that to your starter kit if you become a demonstrator. And the only way to get one of these is to become a demonstrator during the month of January, February. And as a demonstrator, I was able to go ahead and buy one in December uh, as a pre-order. So I'm really excited because it is a limited edition. The only other way to get one is to join Stampin' Up! And if you if you want one of these and you would like to become a demonstrator, you can place a $225 Stampin' Up! product order and pay only $175 and you'll also receive this little mini stamp and cut and emboss machine and you can choose blue or white and or you can just choose $225 worth of Stampin' Up! product and only pay $135 so you're getting $90 of product for free and then after every order afterwards you save 20 to 25 percent so you're guaranteed a 20 percent discount on your following orders and now with your opening order you can't do uh, celebration products but your following order you could if you placed another order between now and the 28th of February so um, if that interests you at all let me know you can give me an email at crittersandink at gmail.com or click on the com contact button on my website which is crittersandink.com so that's that so let's get into this so we'll just put the box over here I have a cute video of one of my cats trying to sit in a paper pumpkin box. It's really quite cute. I'll post it in this. Um, when I edit this video, I'll pop that video in of Georgie, my little black cat, trying to sit into a paper pumpkin box. She's determined to get her little butt in there. This is so cute. It's been a while since I've done a video. It's been a couple weeks. We've been really busy with um, visitors from out of town. And then I was uh, babysitting my grandkids while my daughter did some business meetings. So I was able to go and spend a week with them and that was lovely. I miss the little stinkers. Okay, so let's see what we have here. We have... 369 envelopes and the envelopes are lined with Melody, Mango Melody. And you can see they're, they're I'm gonna pop that line on. They're uh, Mango Melody all the way on the inside, which is nice because sometimes they only have the color on the one on the back part, not on the front part. So that's that. And we have three of this. So these kits, this kit has three different designs and three cards of each design, so nine cards. So these uh, these actually look like the layering diorama dies that you can purchase in the annual catalog. Um, but these are pre-cut for you. So everything in a paper pumpkin is pre-cut. And the only thing you have to do if it's a stamping uh, kit is to you know use your stamps and the first kit you'll get a a little block like this for all of your um, stamps so only your first kit comes with a stamp with a paper pumpkin and um, then you just keep using that one block for all of your stamps for months to follow so here's one little card base oh it's got a rainbow on the inside that's cute. And a pink gingham on the outside. And this one is yellow. I guess it's not really gingham, but I'm calling it gingham. Reminds me of the seersucker that I used to get way back when I was a kid. Oh, I thought that was white on the inside, but it's actually balmy blue. That's really pretty. It's a little frame card. And then here's that check again in the balmy blue and white. Oh, and the inside has raindrops. That's very, very cute. And we have punch outs, clouds. Oh my gosh, look at the little duck. Ah, so cute. Cows, little cows, ducks, frog, little bunny, 
little turtle. So this turtle has the same personality as the one in the Playing in the Rain. This is slightly different. This one's standing up on all fours and this one is standing up on two feet. And the little bunny is kind of the same guy, but just a different perspective. So cute. And flowers and some grass. And how many sheets of that do we have? One, two, three sheets of this. And one sheet of labels and some kites. And our instructions. So this is the instructions for this kit. I like that they're in color now. When I first started doing Paper Pumpkin five years ago, they were in black and white and um, not very appealing, but these are these are quite lovely. Yeah, very nice. And then on the back, it shows you here everything that's in your kit and then some alternatives to do with, with your kit. And in here, let's see. We have, these would be Flirty Flamingo and Balmy Blue Little Raindrops. They're very cute. And some dimensionals and glue dots, so that's great. I'll put these over here for now. And let's see. So this makes nine cards, as I said earlier, three of each of the three designs. And the coordinating colors are Balmy Blue, Basic Black, Cajun Craze, Coastal Cabana, Daffodil Delight, Florida Flamingo, Mango Melody, Old Olive, and Shaded Spruce. So, boy, you can really go to town with all of these uh, colors and just do tons of alternatives. So first we'll do the first card. And so for the first card, what we need is uh, a kite and some flowers. So if you're not familiar with Paper Pumpkin, if you go to paperpumpkin.com, there are some videos about the, the product and, um, and then all the different purchasing options. Or if you have any questions, I mean, obviously you can call me as well. So let's see, have I got everybody? No, I need a bunny. And we need a yellow card base and a piece of grass. And one of these labels. And now I'm going to use my ergonomic blocks just because I like them better. But um, the block that comes with your first paper pumpkin works just great. And I need to put, actually I'll grab a couple of small ones because I need a sunshine. And the inside of the kite. And wishing you sunshine and smiles, let's see. So that's this one. All right, so let's look at the directions here. So I guess the first thing we're going to do is stamp our sunshine. So let's get organized here. So let's fold our card base. Make sure our corners are square. It's 
kind of hard to, to grab it when there's a window. Okay, we're just going to burnish that fold. And so we're going to stamp our sunshine. up in the corner. I just re-inked my ink pad so it's a little juicy. So I want it about there. Perfect. And we're going to put our kite colors on our kite. It's great that this is photopolymer because you can actually see what you're doing. Okay, and there's our kite. And then our sentiment, we're going to put it on our, on our label. Wishing you sunshine and smiles, which is great because it's been storming here since yesterday, which is not lovely. Okay, so let's put this guy together. Okay, so we need our glue dots. So I'm just going to take my take a pick tool and I'm just going to put some uh, glue dots along here. Now you could go just go ahead and use your liquid glue if you wanted to. If, if that makes you, if you're more comfortable with your liquid glue. Um, I am a liquid glue aficionado myself but um, these glue dots are very handy and they're easy you can travel with them and also I want to put some glue dots on the front of my flowers and I'm putting them on the front of the flowers because we're going to put, sit the flowers behind the grass like this okay so we'll go ahead and put glue dots just on the bottom of the flowers Yeah, so if you're anywhere in North America this week, you're getting bombarded with weather. It's been pretty stinky. Although I don't think, I'm in Ontario. Parts of Ontario got hit pretty bad. We had a snowstorm last night, but I don't think it was brutal where I am. My husband was out doing the driveway this morning and it was just snow. There wasn't any um ice but I think we're supposed to get an ice uh, ice pellets this afternoon so we'll see there that goes there and then it also says to put one on the front so I have one glue dot on the front of the kite and one glue dot on the back of the kite and we're going to put some dimensionals on the bunny So I was mentioning about the Stampin' Block, the um, blocks, the acrylic blocks that come with your paper pumpkin. So with your first paper pumpkin, you do get a block. Now, if you order other kits uh, at Stampin' Up, the regular kits in the brown boxes, if I have one, I don't have one handy, but uh, they come in a brown box and they each one of those is self-sufficient, self-contained. They they also, every single kit like that has um, uh, an acrylic block in it. All right, and I want to put three dimensionals on the back of our label. I went out yesterday morning and got a pedicure and I... <laughs> I had to go to a fabric store to look for binding for a quilt I'm finishing and I walked in the store in sandals and it was like brutally cold and starting to snow and the person at the fabric store was so polite and she's just she's just smiling and she looked at my feet and I said oh I just had a pedicure and she says I was wondering about you <laughs> I'm not okay 
<laughs> okay, so let's put this together. So let's pop the uh, backing off the glue dots here. Oh, God, no. Get off. There we are. Okay, and we are going to sit this into the window. There we are. And then our flowers. I'll just pop the backings, or I guess in this case, the frontings <laughs> off. And we can just lift up the gingham part here and just pop our flowers into in between the gingham and the grass. Okay, I'll just press that down. There. And this goes behind here. Couple of cat hairs in there. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this like this. There we are. That's so cute. Oh my goodness. And then Mr. Bunny. He's just gonna go here, and you'll notice I just put dimensionals just on the one side of them there and then our kite see what I mean about my nails here there we go So that's going to go behind Mr. Bunny's hand. And then this one's going to come up here. So cute. Ah. I must wish my grandkids were slightly older. I don't want to age them before their time, but this, this would be a hoot to do with them if they were a little bit older. There, I will just grab some of the pink little dimensional, or not dimensionals, what do you call these elements? That one up here. Down here. So cute. Now they have the second one down here, but I think I'm gonna maybe put it there. So that's our first card. I mean, so quick and easy and lots of room. Now, if you're going to write a note, you want to make sure that you do it, you know, not where the window is because you don't want it to show in the window. But isn't that adorable? Oh, my goodness. Just so cute. Okay, so that's card number one. Quick and easy. And I have confetti everywhere. Okay, now card number two. Let's see. What do we need for card number two? So we need a pink card base with the rainbow and uh, let's see we need a little duck four clouds four and what else One of these. 
and you brighten my day. All right. Very cute. Okay, so let's go back into the directions. Okay, so we are folding our card base. You can see the wind is picking up out there. It's been a very mild winter, so we certainly can't complain. But I feel bad for the people that are getting real nasty weather. Okay, so let's grab our Mango Melody again. And we are going to stamp our sentiment. You brighten my day. So you brighten my day. And a sunshine. So... I don't know if the I'm just gonna stamp on here. There's the sun. So let's see, we need dimensionals. And our little duck. And our glue dots. So on one of the clouds, the glue dots are going to go on the back. And on three of the clouds, the glue dots are going to go on the front. Okay, all right, so let me refocus here. It took me ages to get the hang of this focus business, but I think I have it now, yay. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna put some glue dots on our three clouds, and I'm gonna flip this cloud over and put glue dots on the back. So two glue dots go up in the corner on this one. And then on these three, they just go like this. Yep, that's right. Okay, like that. And two dimensionals on our duck. and three dimensionals on our label. If you're wondering how, I'm just jumping all over the place here today, but if you're wondering how I store my um, paper pumpkin stamps and such. If you go on to the Paper Pumpkin website, paperpumpkin.com, you can print off these sheets. I trim mine down a little bit so that it fits. I don't know where to put this. I'll do it like this. You can print these off um, from the paperpumpkin.com uh, website. And I just trimmed them up, and then I bought these envelopes, these um, plastic, I guess they're sort of big envelopes, to store them in. And I just store them, I have them, alpha, uh, not alphabetized, but by the month. And then I just pop my uh, stamps in here. And then on the back, it shows you what your what your stamps are. So if you're looking for a sentiment, there all you have to do is just flip it over and there, there's all your sentiments. Now this is a little set of dies that were available. They sold out really, really quickly and I'm glad I got a set. But these little dies 
uh, this is the first time that Stampin' Up! has ever had a die as an add-on. And there's two little dies, and one is for the frog, the little frog stamp. And um, so this little guy. And then the other one is for these flowers. And um, unfortunately, they sold out like literally within a couple of weeks, I think. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. But um, if you can get your hands on a set, that would be great. So anyway, I just store everything in these envelopes and I have them in a, in one of those decorative shoe boxes and I just have them uh, from oldest to newest. All my newest ones are at the front. So the, it's really easy to store them and then it doesn't take hardly up any room. So just thought I'd share that with you. So, okay, let's finish this. So we have our rainbow on the inside and we have our, this cloud, we're going to pop over in the corner there like this this is just the cutest paper pumpkin Oop, I got my glue dot sticking out there and then these these clouds I was going to call them flags these flags <laughs> these clouds it's amazing. Uh, I haven't been able to do a video for a couple of weeks now. And it's amazing how you lose kind of your momentum. Like I'm feeling now like it's, I'm almost like a newbie trying to get my uh, self back in the groove. And uh, it's kind of unnerving a little bit. <laughs> so be kind. If you have any critiques, don't want to hear it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put these clouds like this behind. Just with these little glue dots. Let's see, my glue dots are sticking out here. All right, oh my gosh, that's cute. So you just want to make sure that your glue dots aren't sticking out because they'll stick on stuff. So I'm going to pop this little ducky down. Oh, that is so cute. These cards are so quick and easy. So we'll have to, I think, do some, some alternatives. Okay, and then this is going to go right here. And what did I do with those little pink dots? Hmm, there they are. All right, so let's see, where did they put theirs? Here, here, and here. Okay. Now, obviously, it's your card. You can do, you know, whatever floats your boat. But for the first three, I'm just going to do what they have in their instructions, and then we'll see about doing some alternatives. Okay, so there's that. So that's card number two. Little flip-up card. Now this one doesn't leave you a lot of place to write your sentiment to whoever you're giving it to, so you might want to just... Um, you could flip it over, put a piece of white cardstock and write something on the back if you wanted to, or you could just... Keep it sweet and say, happy birthday, love, whoever. But isn't that cute? All right, so that's number two. And now number three. What do we need for number three? So we need one of these. And we need a blue gingham card base. And let's see, an umbrella, a turtle, and two clouds. And a frog. 
This little guy is so cute. And one of these. All right. So let's see. So number three. Um, so we should figure out which way this is going to go. Obviously, it's going to go this way. I'm going to flip this around and do it like I would if it was a diorama die. All right, so let's see. We're going to put some glue dots. Pretty well just around the outside edges. All right, so let's see. Now I'm just going to clean this stamp because um, I need my block for the new sentiment, which is friends in any kind of weather. So I'm just cleaning it on my chamois. This is wishing you, so that one goes there. The beauty of this, so that if you ever wondered if you were missing a stamp, is that it's printed. So you know exactly where your stamps go when you're finished with them. So I'm gonna just clean them all while I'm at it. So every so often, you know, if you have a lot of stuff on your desk and some of it has ink and the back of your card brushes up on the ink, oh, I can ruin your day. <laughs> so I typically clean as I go. Um, and it, it does it take a little bit longer? Yeah, but then I don't have to worry about the back of my card brushing up on um, a dirty stamp and then really ticking me off because I'm going to have to redo the back of the card. So um, just a little hint for you there. All right, so I'm going to need a bigger block than this one because this is quite long hanging over the edge there so let me grab a bigger one is that gonna fit like that yeah so I'm going to when you have a long stamp like this it's really best to drop it and let it fall so that it straightens itself out because if you were to just try and place it like this there's a chance it will curve so if you drop it face first on your work surface they stick to you um, just drop it and let it relax and then pop your um, block on it. It will be straight. All right, so let's, <coughs> excuse me, let's get our stamping done. So the only stamping we have to do with this particular one is the sentiment. So let's go ahead and load it up. Now I typically put my long uh, sentiments on a block on the diagonal like this because I have trouble fighting with the edge of the block if I was trying to line it up like this I, my eye would go to the bottom of the block instead of to my lettering so I do that I do it this way um, you know it's my way of doing things not everybody does it that way but I just find it works best for me and um, you should always test your stamp before and I should have cleaned it first when you have photopolymer you really should clean them before you use them and I sometimes I do and sometimes I forget but there we are beautiful so get that out of here and now we can put our card together so let's see my dimensionals so I need my turtle backwards and I need my umbrella and I need my frog and my clouds are going to use glue dots okay so these are going to have dimensionals and these are going to have glue dots all right so let's get our dimensionals on there so on the turtle we're putting one on his head and two on his feet And in the umbrella, we're putting one just on the one side. And in the frog, we're going just where his feet are. 
Okay, and then on our sentiment, we're going to put three on there. They have four, but I don't know if you need four. There's three. So there's our dimensionals. And now our clouds. So on one of them, I need two little glue dots on the side here. And then on the other, I just need two on the top. So one, two. Okay. So cute. Alrighty, so let's see. These dimensional backings, oh my smokes, they're everywhere. Okay, so one cloud is going to go up here and then this cloud with the uh, glue dots on the one just on the one side are gonna hang over like this adorable so cute and then our little froggy is gonna sit here Looking at the weather out there, kind of crappy. All right, so our little turtle's going here. Now there is a dimensional behind his head, so make sure that you don't go over the um, your uh, backing here. And then the umbrella is just going to go here. And again, same thing. I have an I have a dimensional back there, so I want to make sure that. The dimensional isn't going to show on the inside because it'll stick to your inside of your card and that'll drive you bonkers. Okay, so that's that. It's very simple cards. And this will go right here. And then we have some of our blue little raindrops little glue dots out of here and now when you're doing the raindrops fat part to the bottom okay and let's see we'll just scatter some along here now they've used five I'm only going to use three so that I can use them on other cards but, um, you know, certainly if you wanted to use more than three or five, go right ahead. Isn't that cute? Oh, love it, love it, love it. Again, you're going to have the same issue with writing your sentiment or to, who, to whoever you want to leave a little note. So you'll, you know, you have a little corner here to say love and happy birthday, whatever. But um, just keep that in mind when you're writing your card so that you don't close it and go, oh no, I've written right in the middle of the window. So anyway, so those are the three cards from the kit. And um, yeah, cute as anything. So let's do a couple of alternatives. So in here, on the back of your um instruction sheet there's always a couple of alternatives now this one let's see this one is with the coordinating paper they've used this paper the frog stamp and the flower stamp I can't really tell what they've used for the for the background here so let's have a quick look in this paper and see if we have something that we can use let's see I think they've taken this gray one and had the water sideways instead of the raindrops coming down like this. They have it this way. And that's going to be the water that the frogs are sitting on. All right, well, you know what? Let's wing it. Let's get this paper out of the way. I think I'll use old olive. Okay, I'm gonna grab my trimmer and I'm going to make a card base. 
So I'm going to, I have an eight and a half by 11 and I'm going to score it right down the middle up four and a quarter on the short side, the eight and a half side. So my, oh, my thing fell out. So I've got my scoring blade is the beige, my lighter colored one. The darker one is the cutting blade. So I'm going to go ahead and score that. And then I'm going to rotate my paper and I'm going to cut it at five and a half. And this will give me two card bases in old olive. So let's go ahead and fold this one. And it's too bad I didn't open my um, kit before because I could have sort of planned ahead, but flying by the seat of our pants. <laughs> so that's okay. All right, so what do we need? We need a piece of cardstock or a piece, piece of designer series paper that, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to be four by five and a quarter. So let me grab my trimmer again. So four. And don't throw this out. We can use this on the inside of the card. Four by five and a quarter. And then I'm going to grab my stamp and cut and emboss machine and my diorama dies. So let's see. We don't need a big one. I think I've got like a medium sized one. Okay, so I'm going to take a piece of this raindrop paper, but I want to be sure that I want my water going horizontally as opposed to this way. Because this way it looks like rain, right? If I had it this way, it's going to look like rain, but I want it to look like water. So I'm going to, and I'm going to pop this up in the top left hand corner so that if I want to cut another one, I'll be able to. So I'm going to pop that right up in there. So when you're using the cut and boss machine, you're going to use your base plate, which is number one, and then your cutting uh, shim, which is number two. And all the directions are here for die cutting. It tells you exactly, you know, which pieces you need. You need a one, a two, and two threes. So we got the one and the two and two well-loved threes. So let me put my paper on here. And again, I'm gonna pop my die up in the corner and I want the water going horizontally. So I just place that on there. And we're just going to crank it through. All right, so I'll just pop this over here. All right, so let's see. We can put this here, right on our old olive. A snail here, what a mess. Whew. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on here. Make sure my flowers are standing up the right way. There we are. And let's see. It looks like they have this on dimensional. So let's go ahead. Or do they? Well, maybe it's the flowers that are on dimensionals. You know what? Let's do... Um, we'll glue the water down. And then put everything else up on dimensionals. So we'll go ahead and put... Just glue here. This is so cute. All right, and I need a piece of basic white and my frog stamp and a block. And I also need my little flowers. 
All right, so I have some Memento Black ink here. And I need two frogs. <laughs> He's so cute. And then my flowers, it looks like they have three sets of flowers. So let's go ahead and do three. You'll notice I'm leaving space in between because I'm going to be cut, cutting it out with dies, right? And number three. Get my dirty stamps out of the way. And I'm going to use my little um, stamp and cut emboss machine just because I just want to show you the blue one. Isn't it cute? Oh my goodness. It's so, so cute. And it's adorable. It just folds up into this little tiny thing to carry if you're going. When I go to my friend's house, this is what I bring with me. I know she has a big one if I need to do a bigger embossing folder or something. But there are specifically embossing folders for this size that are available. And... Um, Lot, most most dies, I would say. Well, I don't know about most dies. A lot of dies will fit just on this little. And I keep this right next to me all the time on my little trolley here. So I'm going to use my dies. Now, unfortunately, as I said, these sold out really, really fast. And I was just one of the lucky ones to be able to get one. And I'm kind of wishing now I'd ordered a couple. but um, So I'm going to use them. But fussy cutting is so easy. And um, in fact, I'll cut out some and I'll fussy cut a frog just to show you how easy it actually is. And then I, I just need to grab some uh, uh, Stampin' Blends to um, color our frog. Oh, these are the flowers. There's our frog, goes on here. Oh, that face, my goodness. Okay, and my other plate is right here. Okay, so if you're pretty confident that it's not going to move, just go ahead and plop that down on there. So there's one frog. It did slip a little bit. Maybe I'll use a piece of tape on the second one. I always have a roll of washi tape right beside me here because I do a lot of cutting there that way it won't move so cute so cute okay so there's our little frog it still moved a little bit that's all right and then our flowers. So I'm just going to trim this. This only has a three inch, um, I think it's about three and a half inches wide. So, you know, you're limited as to what you can cut out with it. So let me go ahead and put my flowers on there. There's one. Oh, I was going to fussy cut a frog for you. I can stamp another one. Get in there. So if you're interested in one of these, you know, let me know. Again, the only way to get one is to sign up as a demonstrator um, with Stampin' Up. But that doesn't mean that you have to, you know, do videos or home parties or any of that kind of stuff. Um, when I joined, I joined just for the discount. Who doesn't love a discount? So you can just become a hobby shopper 
and get your 20% off every month. Like, why not? Especially if you think you're going to be, you know, stamping on a regular basis. There's always new stuff coming out and um, the quality of the product. Before I met um, my upline, my friend Jennifer, I was just using Michael's paper. Well, you know what? Nothing against Michael's paper, but it doesn't, it's not anywhere near the quality and the smoothness of the Stampin' Up! paper. And everything with Stampin' Up! coordinates. The inks match the paper perfectly. The designer series papers match uh, the cardstock and the ink, and there's watercolor pencils and water-based markers. You can't go wrong. The product is amazing. And then if you can get a 20% discount on top of that, why not? Okay, so we're done with that for just a second. I'm just gonna grab some alcohol markers. So when you're using alcohol markers, one thing you need to know if you're new to this is that they actually will go through your um, white cardstock and stain, potentially stain whatever you have behind there. My first year as a demonstrator, um, the annual, big annual meeting was being held in Orlando, Florida, and I was making all these swap cards to take down and swap with other demonstrators. And I was using, um, I did a lot of florals, and I was coloring with a bright pink on a TV table, a wooden TV table, while we were watching a movie. And when I was finished... I had pink flowers seeped onto my TV table. Now, eventually, they finally faded about two years later. So always have even just a piece of typing paper, something under there that's going to absorb the ink um, rather than seep into your table. Just a word of warning. I learned that one the hard way. So I'm going to go ahead and just color these leaves. And, you know, I mean, this is a handmade little card. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. You're not Hallmark. You're not printing it by laser. Um, make it fun. Just, you know, enjoy the process. Don't stress over it. When I first started, I would stress over it and stress over it, and then it took the fun out of it. So, um, obviously... If it's not fun, you're not going to do it. So keep it simple. Keep it fun. So I'm using uh, right on here, light mossy meadow. Oh, I thought I had grabbed old olive and light old olive. Dark mossy meadow and light old olive. Let's see what they look like together. Otherwise, I'll get up and get another one. Meh, I think I'll get the old olive dark. Mossy meadow is nice, but it's not what I want. Okay. So let's, I'm going to outline my frog. I'm going to use the bullet uh, tip. So on these markers, you can see there's a skinny line and a not so skinny line. So the thicker line actually means that this end is a brush tip. And this end is more like a, a, like a bullet point tip. It's a harder and a finer. So you can get a little bit more precision with this bullet tip. So because these little frogs are so tiny, um, how do they color their frog? So this is the dark one. So I'm going to do his belly in the dark. And just maybe outline on his legs here a little bit. And the beauty of the alcohol markers is that they blend. And that's why they're called Stampin' Blends. So if you add the lighter one to the darker one, it softens the lines. Oh, he's so cute. So, so, so cute. Okay, so this one froggy. Adorable. 
So I just went over um, with the dark on his tummy and his face a little bit. So I'm just going to blend that so that I don't have any harsh lines. Oh, that's so cute. Cute, cute. And let's see. I have, what do I have here? A light polished pink. What color is that? That's pretty pink. Well, that's all right, because I think these are flirty flamingos, so it'll be fine. Oh, maybe I should grab flirty flamingo. I'm going to use the light flirty flamingo. Yeah. And I think I'll use the So Saffron, I think on this middle flower here. Very, very cute. Okay, so let's see how we're gonna put this on here. Oh, you know what else they have? They have grass cut out of this die here. So I'm going to grab some scraps of the old olive and run a couple of those through. But I think in the meantime, we could probably, oh, and you know what else they did? They cut clouds out of old olive. So this is how I store my paper. I have just a file folder and I have the, um, I just label them with, with uh, the name and the number. And then the R means regal. So it's one of the regal groups of color. And then I take, I have a little half inch punch circle and I put a half inch circle there so that I can just quickly look and see um, which color I want. And then I bought these envelopes on Amazon. They're like a job envelope. And I keep all my scraps in here. So if I just need a little piece, I can just go ahead and grab it real quick and punch out whatever I need uh, to punch out. So I'll just keep those here for now. And my filing cabinet, I was lucky enough, there was an office closing. A friend of mine worked at an office that was relocating. And um, I got the filing cabinet for free. So yay, <laughs> big win. All right, so let me grab my little... Um, cut and emboss machine again and I'm going to cut out a couple of these little bulrushy things and I don't know if will this cloud fit in here too yes it will okay so I'm going to cut out a grass and a cloud all at once. So you can see how handy this is. I literally just keep it right beside me all the time. And then um, whenever I need to just quickly run a couple of things through, it's so handy. It's right here. And I, I have my bigger one is behind me, but it, I typically keep that on a different table so that I if I need to be doing big things to get ready for a class or something, I'll, um, I'll go out and do it on the pool table where I have lots of room. So how many of those do they have? Three. Do we have three? I believe we have three. Okay. Okay, and don't throw this away. I can still get a couple of pieces of grass out of this. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to be a little bit stingy with your paper. Um, it goes a long way. And it's easy to keep your little bits in, um, in a folder like that with your regular paper. And it doesn't take up that much space. So, All right, so let's put this aside. And let's just see where we're at. Oh, yeah, I was going to show you how to fussy cut a frog. So 
let me do that real fast because I don't want you to be bummed out that you couldn't get a die and um, fussy cutting is so easy sometimes when I'm getting ready for a class if I need to fussy cut some flowers out I just take it upstairs and fussy cut a whole pile of them while I'm watching television because it's quite therapeutic actually so uh, let me zoom in just a smidgen and focus there that's better so when I'm fussy cutting you'll notice the paper moves the scissor doesn't move that much so I'm gonna rotate my paper and precision is not an issue it just has to be cute now you want rounded edges you don't want it all sharp and sort of rough looking but that comes with time when I first started fussy cutting I wasn't that great at it but um, yeah just keep at it by the time you do a whole sheet of designer series paper of flowers you'll be really good at it <laughs> so There we go. That's all there is to it. It's so simple. So we don't need him for now. I put my inky stamps out of the way so I don't get ink on anything. All right, so let's see. Where are we gonna put our things? So we have our flowers and we have our glue dots. And we have our lily pads made out of uh, clouds. And you could fussy cut clouds too. Um, just make a cloudy looking circle like it doesn't, you know. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here again. Okay. All right, so here's our flowers. Here's our weeds. And here are our frogs. So I gotta put the clouds onto, uh, the lily pads onto dimensionals, I think. Probably could have got away with one on this one, but it's all right. <laughs> this is so cute. Oh my god. So there's one lily pad. And the same with cutting out the water. You could have done that by hand as well. Just take a pencil and lightly draw your design. Or what you could do is take one of the um, gray mats and trace it onto uh, a piece of this paper and then just cut around that. You could certainly do that. Okay, so here's our other lily pad. I probably should put this one a little bit lower. Let's see if I can peel that off without wrecking my paper. Ah, I did it. I'll put him a little bit lower here. So cute. All right. And then we can just put glue dots on the back of our little froggies. And I'm just going to put a couple of glue dots on the bottoms where his feet are. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend it. I actually have a couple. There is, um, it's called the Take Your Pick Tool, and it's got a pokey, very sharp uh, little pokey tool. And then if you unscrew it and pop it off, there's a little spatula. And there's also another tip. Um, that comes with it and it's 
it's the same thing. It just unscrews and it's a embossing tool with a smaller head and then a larger head. And then this top is optional. It's a brush for doing detailed dies to pop the paper out of your detailed dies. So I just keep this second one set up all the time because you do do a lot of detailed dies. So I just purchased a second one and then I have this one set up with my embossing tool and the brush and this one with the pokey tool which I use the most. And then this side has a putty end for picking up gems. So you just push a gem with it. It's sliding all over the place. You push a gem with it and it sticks and then you can place your gem where you want it. So great investment if you're interested. I gave my um, crafty daughter, stepdaughters, each one for Christmas because they, they like to do the paper pumpkins and um, they didn't have one so I gave each of them one for Christmas. Oops, the wrong one. And they were delighted. There we go. And then let's see what they did. So it looks like these flowers are on dimensionals too. So I'm going to cut a dimensional into half. And just put a dimensional here and here. I don't know if you can hear the noise in the background. My husband make, is making a, um, a balsa wood airplane. It's I think the wingspan's about five or six feet. It's huge. And um, he's getting ready for the spring. He belongs to a model airplane club. And it's all old men and their toys. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. He loves it. It's, it's nice that he gets out. All right, so I'm going to pop this here and this one over here. I was kind of worried when we sold the store, when we closed the store last year, and my husband didn't really have a hobby, and I was like, oh no. But, um, I'm glad he got interested in this model airplane and it's a bunch of his peers and they, they have a great time. I'm going to put this like that. And I think I'm just going to put glue dots on the back of these brassy things. I'm just going to put a grass here and another grass beside it. There's another one. There we are. Oh, that is just so cute. All right, and we need a sentiment. So I'm going to use one of the sentiment. Um, tags that came with it and I'm going to use this one here and they have you brighten my day so let's grab that one and I need a block Okay, and then Mangled Melody ink, or you could use uh, Old Olive, I guess, or, oh, you know what, I put that in the wrong place. I put it on the side instead of on the stamping part. There, I'm just going to test this out. I don't know if I have too much ink on it. Nope. All right. 
Very cute. Okay, so there is one alternative. Adorable. That is so cute. I love it. Okay, so there's one. Let's close the ink. I'm just going to clean my stamp so I don't have a disaster on my hands, which, you know, that happens. Okay, so whenever I see a cutout uh, card base like this, I always think window card. So, or shaker card, not window card. It is a window card. First thing I'm going to do, though, is put away my little dies so I don't lose any. I'm back. So, my phone that I use for a camera uh, wasn't plugged in, and I thought it was, and it died. So, I gave it a few minutes to charge, went and got some water, and we're back. So, here is the sentiment that I just stamped out, and I put two dimensionals on the back, and we're just going to pop that right here. And that's our little card. Isn't that cute? So now I'm actually going to make one the traditional way of doing a window card or a, a shaker card. Because to be honest with you, this to me was way too much work. So I'll show you the traditional way that I've always made a shaker card. And I'm going to use the blue one this time. And I guess we'll do it this way, since this seems to be... I'm gonna do it this way, okay. So let's do the same thing. We're gonna cut this at four and a quarter, four, four by five and a quarter. So I'm gonna cut an eighth of an inch off of this side. And then we're, I'm going to put the, what do I want? Four by five and a quarter. So if I cut it off at four, it's still pretty centered. I, I'm okay with that. And I want this to be five and a quarter. So I'm going to cut an eighth of an inch off of each side so that it is centered. Five and a quarter. There. So... That should do it. And I'm going to cut this at I'm not going to cut this yet. I'm going to wait until I have everything figured out. So I need a piece of window sheet. So our window sheet comes in 12 by 12 uh, sheets. And um, this is a piece that I have left. So I'm going to cut this at uh, four by five and a quarter. Yeah. No, I think I'm going to cut this at three and seven eighths. By five and an eighth. I want it just a little bit smaller. There. And don't throw out these little pieces because you can use them for when you have um, like little cards with pop-up little thingamajigs. This, these work really well. So don't throw those out. And I'm going to grab my, my foam strips. And if you have the adhesive foam uh, sheets, you can use those uh, and just cut strips yourself. But this is very convenient. You get 40 strips of these foam, double-sided adhesive little foam strips. So um, I'm never without them. I use them a lot because I love window shaker card. I don't know why I keep calling it a window card. It's a shaker card. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some tear and tape along the 
This is smaller, so I'm going to put the tear and tape on the smaller piece. And I'm just going to go all the way around. This is going to be fun. All right, so I'm just going to burnish that down really well. You can use your bone folder if you like. Just makes the paper easier to lift. Let's get this off of my bone folder before it ends up being stuck there permanently. Boy, if you could see the top of this desk, <laughs> you'd cringe. Okay, so I'm just going to lift the backing off. And I think I'm going to just do it partly so that I can not have so much adhesive that I'm struggling. So I'm going to center this window sheet um, just on the back of the cutout part. And then I'm just going to lift the paper there. All right, so that's nice and firmly adhered to our card base. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take some of the foam sheets, foam strips, and I'm just going to peel one up. And these are great because they're very flexible. So I'm just going to go around and you don't have to be perfect on this um, just you know around you just want to go around because wherever this ends is where the sequins are going to sit so you know if you're a little bit over like below it or whatever, it doesn't matter. The other thing you don't want to do is have it so that you can see it from the other side. So you just want to make sure that you don't go over the, the, um, the cutout part. Whoever had the bright idea to cut these out was a genius. I love this. Okay, and I just need part of another one. And you want to make sure that you don't have a gap, because if you have a gap in between your um, little foam strips, you're going, your sequins are going to come out. And you'll be sending this in the mail, and the envelope will be full of sequins. Not cool. All right, so let's pop that over there. There we are. So just make sure you don't have any gaps. There. So that's good. Don't need that anymore. Okay. So, uh, let's see. I need my card base. So this is the other white card base that we cut out earlier and so I'm kind of winging it I haven't really planned this out so let's just give this some thought for a minute what do we want to have behind here 
So we have to think this out before we put sequins in there because once we get the sequins in here, we can't think about it. We have to do it. So if we make this a meadow, we could put a piece of the designer series paper that had grass on it. So let's just grab a little piece that I have left. So, uh, you know what we could do is I have a piece of sky left as well. So we could cut a little piece of sky, actually. I have a piece of sky cut out already. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to cut a piece of sky that is three and three quarters by. No, I think I'll go, yeah, three and three quarters should do it. So three and three quarters by. I'm going to cut this down to one and a half. No, to two. I'll cut it down to two. As I said, I'm winging it, so. Two. So then this has to be two. So I'll go ahead and make this two. All right? Yep, yeah, two and two is four. Four by five and a quarter. So maybe I'll do one and seven eighths. And again, you know what? It's only paper. And if it doesn't work out, I'll just cut another piece of paper. Yeah, because I just want to make sure that when I put this on here, it's not going to show behind. I'm just going to make this a smidgen shorter. Just a hair, hair shorter. And then that way, I don't have to worry about it showing. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on. Okay, and so what are we going to put on there? Let's use up some of our elements that we have left over from our kit. So let's see. We could put some flowers. Let's use the turtle this time. So wait, you know what? We could do a variation of that other picture the other card that we did. Which one was that? We could do a variation of this one. Except with the background being uh, grass instead of rain. We'll take a couple of clouds. Get some more flowers. And we have the stamp so we can always stamp off more if we need to. Let's get these out of the way here. This desk is getting more and more crowded by the second. What a mess. Okay, and we'll probably need a... Okay. All right, so let's see. Let me figure out what we're doing here first. That looks cute, hey? Right? It's cute. And a couple of clouds. We can cut this cloud in half and not waste cloud because we could stick it under here. Yep. Let's do that. Okay, so I need some adhesive. 
And we'll stick a cloud under here. And put this cloud up here. And these flowers. Down here. And I'm not going to put the turtle on dimensionals because this is already on dimensionals and it's going to be so thick that you would have trouble mailing it, I think. So I'm just going to put the turtle here. All right, so let's flip this over. And let's get rid of this stuff. Clean up our mess a little. So um, let's put some of the sequins right in the middle. I'll grab some green ones. And you don't need to go crazy with these. Like You can put as many or as little as you like. And the other thing I'm going to grab are the little floral um, confetti things that came in the speed. So the loose daisy embellishments are very, very cute. See if you can. Aren't they cute? So I'm going to put some of those on here. And not too many, but I'll put a few. All right. So next, I will take the backing off of our window. I'm going to take a little bit more of this strip and I'm going to just put them in the corners because I don't want to have droopy sides. I want them to be, you know, to hold up if they're going to go in the mail. And even if it's not, you just, you want it to sit nicely. So this here all right cross your fingers okay can you see ta-da much better. I think I probably have a little bit too many sequins in there, but I, I actually like this technique way better than um, than the one that we did with using the little bag. This one here. I actually, it's okay, you know, it's not, I like this one way better. So I think what I'm going to do is put some Wink of Stella on the flowers and on the cards. So here is that little card. And then on the inside, what, what can we stamp on the inside? Let's see. I'll just stamp a couple of little flowers in black. And I'm just going to pop a couple of flowers in there. Now I'm not going to color them with the blends because if I show you, I didn't show you, but let me do just real quick on the back of this frog. You'll see how the blends go right through the paper. So I wouldn't, um,
I'm not going to color the whole frog, but just to give you an idea. You can see how the ink goes through. So I wouldn't want to color these flowers with the blends because it'll go through the back and then it won't be pretty. So we're just going to leave them like that. And um, if you wanted to, you could use your blends, um, like a blender pen and just water-based ink if you wanted to. And <clears throat> um, do it that way. But isn't that adorable? And then so here you have a little note card. You can go ahead and write a note. And then if you wanted to, on your envelope, take a stamp it up envelope and my other piece of backing is it going to be wide enough it is not well actually what I could do is this take a piece of this and I'm going to cut a strip that is two and a quarter by six So two and a quarter. Put the lid on my little flowers so they don't go flying everywhere. So two and a quarter by six. And then I'm going to glue here's my silicone mat what a mess oh it smokes okay i take my silicone mat and my stamp and seal and i'm just going to put adhesive right along the score line of the envelope and then down the sides and i do this with a lot of my cards it's a great way to to use up you know, um, designer series paper that you just have little pieces of and you're not sure kind of what to do with it. So I'm going to put my clouds and I want to make sure my clouds are the right way up. So I'm going to go this way and I'm going to just lay that piece right along the score line. And then I'm just going to trim away whatever isn't envelope flap. pretty is that love it there so there's your envelope and there's your card isn't that cute and you could stamp something on the front here too you could stamp a little turtle if you wanted to now if you wanted to stamp a turtle on here and then color it with your blends all I would suggest is that you stick a piece of scrap cardstock behind inside the envelope so that the ink doesn't bleed all the way through both layers of the of the envelope but you can definitely color it if you have something in between to absorb the ink from the blender pens because it's an alcohol base but isn't that sweet oh you know what we even put a sentiment on here so here's our sentiment all right Oh, you know what? We should have put a sunshine on there. I have a thought. Let's cut out a sun. We're going to cut out a sun. Block. So this is how I roll. <laughs> a little piece of scrap basic white here. Just begging to be used. finger in the ink that's always good all right and I'm just gonna fussy cut this all right very good so we're just gonna put a little bit of adhesive on here and stick the sun right there 
And then put that there. I like it. Go a little happy handed with the glue there, but that's all right. All right, we'll let that dry for a second, but isn't that sweet? Love it, love it. Okay, let's clean this up a little bit. Well, see, I could have used this on the inside. Well, I probably still could. Let's do it. Let's do it. It goes this way. I'm getting glue on everything. All right, so. Beauty. Okay. All right, so let's clean this up. All right, so this was one of the original cards from the kit. And this was my first shaker card, which I didn't love. And this is the one I do love. Isn't that cute? Cute, cute. And then this was one of the window cards that we did from the kit, original from the kit. And this was also the alternative from the kit. And this was one of the ones from the kit. So the three kit cards are here. And then three alternatives are here. Aren't they sweet? Love them. Love them. So once again, you have until March the 10th, if you're thinking of subscribing to Paper Pumpkin. Uh, March 10th is the cutoff date. For the March Paper Pumpkin. Um, I'll have a link in the description uh, to go to Paper Pumpkin for my site. Yeah, so if you're thinking of becoming a demonstrator and you want to get one of these beauties, if you have any questions about that or you'd like me to re-clarify, yeah, contact me at critterzinink at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching. I enjoyed spending my time with you. And uh, have a great evening. Bye for now. Okay, so I'm back. Um, yesterday I made this shaker card with the faker shaker. And um, as I mentioned in the video, I actually didn't like it very much. So today I'm going to, I rewatched the video that Rachel Tessman had done. And I'm going to do it her way. I've myrtleized the, the original, so I'm just going to kind of fake it. So I'm going to take my little mailing envelope that I had yesterday, and I'm going to cut it from the back end, like the bottom, uh, at three and a half. So I'm going to cut this at three and a half. And I'm just going to flip over. I kept this part of the card because I really liked it. So I'm just going to flip that over and I'm going to take this little pocket that I made and I'm going to tape it with tear and tape right to the um, card front from the back. Does that make sense? So here's my tear and tape and I'm just going to go like this and I might as well just reuse the sequins and stuff that I had in this package so I'm just gonna pour this into this little window like this Okay, and then seal this again with the tear and tape. So I'll just make sure that's pretty flat and I'm just going to take the tear and tape and you want to make sure that you get right to the corner and you want it to be flat. So I'm going to put this on like this. And you want to, of course, go right over the corner because you don't want any sequins escaping out of the corner here and 
there we go. So that's on there. And it's much nicer, much flatter. And I'm not dealing with all the bulk on the side. So totally, this is the way to go. And then uh, I'm going to put dimensionals on it. Now, when I destroyed this, I actually also destroyed my rainbow. And I don't believe I have any rainbow left. But what I do have is some cloud fabric. Not fabric. <laughs> I have fab I'm looking for a binding fabric for my quilt, so I'm binding it. fabric on the brain. So I think if I put some of this cloud behind here, it'll look really cute. So I need a piece that's about uh, three and a half by three and a half by four and three quarters, let's say. No, three and a half by five. So let's cut this at three and a half by five. And I don't need to save these uh, flowers at the bottom because I have these flowers here. So I'm not too worried about that. So I'm gonna go three and a half, which is what we cut the plastic little baggie at by five. Let's see if that's gonna be too much. You know what, I'm gonna go four and three quarters. I think that'll be better. So four and three quarters. Oh, here's a tip for you. One time I was doing some stamping and I was using photopolymer stamps and they stick to everything. And I was looking and looking and looking and I was so frustrated. And then about an hour later, I went, I retraced all my steps because I was missing an entire page of stamps. And I thought, what the heck? Anyway, as it turns out, they were stuck to the back of my trimmer. So yeah, if you're ever missing stamps, look on the back of things because they are super sticky. All right, so enough of that. So now I'm going to um, place this here. Let's just see what that looks like. Cute, cute, cute. So it's very cute. You can see the clouds in there. Very sweet. So I'm just going to put some adhesive along the very corners of here. Not corners, edges. And I'm going to make sure my clouds are facing the right way. And I'm just going to plunk that right on there. Oh, see, so much nicer. Should always watch the whole video. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to pop some dimensionals on this. I can find some. That. And I'm not actually going to put any in the middle because I do have the bulk from the um, sequins and things. So let's just pop this off. My white card base. And I really I could have used them. Um, checking to see if I have a blue one on my table, but I do not. So we'll just use a white one, that's fine. So here we go. And there we are, much better. So I'm glad I decided to rewatch the video and um, figure out how to do it the proper way to make it. Uh, a faker shaker and I actually don't mind this uh, it's way better than it was with the one I did yesterday however um, I think I still like the what do I do with it the actual shaker card made with this foam strips and things like that but if you don't have any and you have some of these plastic envelopes totally the way to go
All right. Thanks for letting me share.